السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی یو ٹو دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان اینڈ لیکچر نمبر نائنٹین آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور وی آر اسٹل ان ٹو گڈ اولڈ پوزیشننگ آئی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دس فار دا پریویس تھری لیکچرس پرابلی اینڈ ایم اسٹل گن ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا سیم اینڈ آئی ایم گن ٹو پک اپ دا تھریڈس ویئر آئی لیفٹ ان دا پریویس لیکچر We're talking about um, a shift in positioning and all that. Positioning, maintaining positioning, and repositioning are some of the most popular questions relating to area. When should we do, do that and why should we do that are the questions that we're going to discuss in this lecture. There are certain guiding principles which uh, lay the foundation for any changes that are to be brought about in the positioning of a brand. And let us start talking about those one by one. Uh, the first being, update your position whenever it is necessary. You have to look at the positioning from the standpoint of uh, fulfillment of needs. If as brand managers, you realize that uh, the needs are being fulfilled without any problem, it is still relevant to the target market, meaning positioning, It is still relevant to the market dynamics and customers do not really have any problem with the positioning that we have for the brand, then you may not change that. But the moment you realize that there are certain needs which remain unmet, and you have been quick all the time, but you have been very efficient in uh, the trying to identify if there are any needs which are to be met and you have identified, okay, fine, there are some. And that is where you start considering whether you should go for a change in positioning or not. So when I said, wherever and whenever there are unmet needs, you should change the position. I never meant that you as brand managers have been sleeping over something or have not been really alert to the bringing about uh, a response to the, you know, the unmet needs, uh, meaning meeting Uh, the changes? No, I don't mean that. Uh, what I meant was, and still mean is, that um, any unmet needs which um, are there for um, the taking and therefore fulfillment, uh, you must grab those and capitalize those and then see if they require any change in positioning. Generally, it is said that uh, it is about three to five years of time given to one positioning relating one consumer brand. That may not be true in the case of Volvo, the example which I gave you in the previous lecture. And you will recall what happened. Sales declined only because the people started thinking that maybe the company has changed the focus from safety to performance and they are no longer paying attention to the safety factor. And they felt kind of um, you know, got put off. They did not talk to buy the car in as uh, much number uh, or in, in as much volume as the car was selling previously. So that is one example which very convincingly explains uh, whether that we should go ahead with uh, the change in position or not. In relation to the consumer consumables, like I told you, it is said that generally it is about three to five years when you should start considering that a change in positioning that should come about. To what extent, whether the change should be minor or should be major, that is something that you have to study in relation to the dynamics of the situation at that particular point in time. But there are certain guiding principles um, uh, are other factors which um, lay the foundation um, for uh, the shift in positioning in a well-structured way. Let us take a look at those one by one. And I would invite you to take a look at uh, the screen which graphically illustrates what those factors are. As you can see from this illustration, there are uh, the five factors which uh, are um, studied whenever there is a need to update your brand position. Uh, number one is uh, the value. And here, 
we have to ask ourselves again uh, quite a few questions. Uh, it, it all is a game of questions and answers because you have to uh, reassure yourself that whatever you are undertaking uh, that has to be uh, most accurate and you do not make any uh, strategic mistakes because uh, any lapses on, on your account are going to translate into uh, strategic fiascos and disasters. And you've got to make sure that, uh, that you do not run into that kind of a difficult situation. So with what is value? With one of the criteria of uh, judging uh, whether we should be updating the position or not, the questions uh, that you should you know, ask yourselves are, do customers feel motivated to buy? If they are no longer very much interested or feel motivated to keep on buying, uh, that is the moment when you start thinking to yourself, well, what has gone wrong? But maybe we're not really communicating the right message. And that is where you start considering a shift in positioning. The second question which you may ask yourself is, do the customers really prefer uh, our brand over competition? Now, this is something which is going to lead to the comparison, which I talked about earlier, and about which you are an expert by now, I hope very much. Because you compare the strengths of your brand vis-a-vis -vis the strengths of competitors' brands. Now, there's a very strong possibility that competitors have done something uh, with their brands um, and um, have improved the positioning uh, of, uh, of, if not all the comp uh, competitor brands, say if one major brand has improved uh, to the detriment of your brand, uh, that is a, a moment of uh, uh, thought. You must think to yourself, what is it that you should do? Shift the position, and if shift, how? In what terms? In terms of service, or in terms of the product attributes, in terms of distribution, um, in terms of technology, so that whatever is the case, that is going to present itself to you if you try to be incisive and if you try to be analytical. Uh, the next question which you should ask yourself is, do they really feel uh, the getting the benefits? I mean, maybe they are tired of, um, uh, of the benefits, you know, which have become so st standard by now, only because somebody else has uh, offered them uh, the better benefits. So that again is uh, a, a situation in which you must think to yourself, but what is it that you should be doing with, uh, uh, with the shift in positioning? Now, uh, whenever we talk about the shift, uh, it means that it is not something that uh, the only may be confined to uh, the level of communication. Uh, because uh, we know that positioning is something uh, which solves a communication problem. But then that communication which is taking place destined for the customer has to be matched with the product itself. Otherwise, what is it that you're going to talk? So, therefore, it is going to have its ramifications across so many boundaries, across so many functional lines, with the meaning that maybe there is something that has to be done uh, in terms of the production process. Maybe there is something that has to be done in terms of the technology. There is something that has to be done uh, in terms of uh, the machines. You know, the technology is the same, but machines have become very old, and you have started receiving a lot of quality complaints. And in order to rectify those, whether you've got to do something with the machines and equipment. Or maybe, you know, you have to do something with uh, information systems. Uh, these are the few areas to which you know, I keep talking about for your benefit. And uh, the objective is that your approach should not be very single-minded and you've got to uh, understand and keep into consideration all the touch points, all the contact points which brand management has with other uh, functional areas within the business setup. Okay. Um, Another question which you must ask yourself is, uh, uh, does the market allow us to uh, charge a premium? Now, this is not a negative situation. This could be a situation in which you see the brand is so strong that you feel actuated to go for a price increase. And you feel actuated to go for a price increase because of so many different factors, inflation being one. 
and you've got to meet all the challenges of increasing costs. I mean, direct costs, indirect costs, in everything which is translated into money. So you think to yourself, why shouldn't we go for a price increase? The question is, uh, is the market ready for that? And if the market is ready, you bring about that change. Now, the next question is, does the change uh, signify uh, a shift in positioning or not? If it does, we shall talk about that. Why? If it does, then you bring about a change in positioning. Another question uh, in relation to the value uh, uh, of the brand um, is, does the positioning uh, cut across uh, various segments? I would take you back once again to the price quality index. You started with uh, one of the segments and you also remember the segments to the right and left of the one where you started off. Now, it is very obvious that you're not going to confine yourself to just one segment or to just one offering. You, you ought to have so many different offerings in order to satisfy uh, maybe the same need in a very macro way, but then um, to serve so many different customers uh, relating to a brand is for when. Maybe somebody is not that hungry and that somebody is looking for something you know, which is smaller in size and which, is, uh, which has a taste profile, which is uh, very compatible with that particular point in time. So you ought to offer the customer something uh, which has a variation. And if you are in a position to do that, meaning if you are in a position to uh, offer uh, so many entries, meaning so many different uh, uh, types of sandwiches with the two uh, different types of customers that are within the same segment, then the positioning of the brand uh, is good and it really is valued. And you can say um, it is valuable because you do not really have to uh, shift it uh, that frequently or that often because it cuts across uh, so many segmental lines. Okay, um, the next um, criterion is about uniqueness. And uh, this says, does the position make of a brand really unique? Meaning, does it exclude competition? If it does exclude competition, it really carries uh, the character and the element of uniqueness. And the questions that we have to consider uh, are, do customers consider of a brand uh, positioning as something uh, really unique, uh, different from others? If the answer is yes, okay, fine. If the answer is no, then it does not really carry that element of uniqueness. And uh, you that might be forced into thinking that you have to bring about uh, a change in positioning, meaning you have to update that. Uh, the next criterion um, is... Um, uh, whether does, I mean, the next question is, uh, does our brand really offer a unique value proposition? I mean, USP. When I was talking about USPs in relation to one particular era, uh, which was back in the 1950s, which was the product era, now that doesn't mean that USPs have ceased to exist. Even today, and for all times to come, companies and brands are going to find uh, unique selling propositions in order to differentiate their brand from the rest of the crowd. And if you um, are convinced that your brand does carry a USP, then there may not be need to bring about um, a change in positioning. But if the brand no longer offers something which you might term as a unique proposition, then the positioning has got to be updated. Something has to be done. And again, you have to decide in relation to the situation, uh, the kind of change which should be brought about. Maybe in the package, just about the package, uh, because cons consumers and customers are tired of uh, looking at the same thing uh, for years and years. Or maybe in terms of uh, 
some hardcore attributes and so on and so forth. Another question that uh, you may ask yourself is, uh, do customers immediately recall of a brand when we tell them the position? Now, this is not to say that you talk with your customers about the positioning statement which you crafted uh, in relation to your strategic planning and in terms, to, in terms of uh, your strategic preparation uh, for um, the whole framework. It doesn't mean that. Of course, you know, that's something very internal. But then you develop that because you want to be very clear about uh, what direction the brand is going to take and uh, what are going to be different turns with which you might be taking in here and there uh, in order to reach your final destination. Uh, getting back to the question, uh, when you are talking with your customers in relation to with your market research, with which the model which you developed uh, while you were developing the brand picture, for example, you know, those are the models you know, which will help you uh, all along. When you are talking with your customers, this was, I think, if I recall correctly, one of the questions somewhere um, where you ask them uh, by way of giving them leads and those leads indirectly are related to the position that you have created uh, for their mind. And when you give them that lead, they immediately uh, say, yes, uh, that's the brand which I can think of you know, when you name this particular factor. And um, if the a respondent uh, immediately they can recall the, your brand, then they, there is nothing wrong with positioning. It means positioning stays very strong. But if the um, respondent or, or the customer uh, cannot really uh, recall uh, the, your brand, um, even with the help of uh, with very strong leads, then you've got to do something about your positioning. The next criterion is about uh, uh, credibility, uh, and that um, addresses the question, um, is our brand positioning credible in the marketplace, or is it something that we have to do in order to make it credible? Are there competitive brands that are much more credible? Now, what is it you know, which makes the brand more credible? It may not be the tangible you know, factors, the meaning, uh, the, the uh, hardcore attributes uh, which uh, uh, may go wrong. Uh, it may be just, uh, for example, distribution which has caused uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, ripples you know, full of problems. You, in that case, could have to do something to fix the distribution situation in order to make your brand credible. The point is, you have to uh, look at anything and everything with which has the potential or which has made your brand um, incredible. Staying credible and strong is the basic objective. Uh, another question relating credibility that you can ask yourself is, are we uh, delivering the promise? You know, maybe uh, we no longer are uh, delivering the promise. Again, one reason could be uh, that we have some quality problems and uh, customers do not feel that the promise uh, this brand makes is being fulfilled, meaning there's a breach of contract. Or is it that uh, there is something uh, wrong with uh, uh, communication process? The promise is being delivered, but somehow a perception on part of the customers uh, has developed that we are poor on delivering the promise. But even then, uh, like we all know, perception is stronger than reality, but we have to look into the situation and fix it. Another question that uh, we must ask ourselves is, is the positioning credible enough to allow the management commit resources for time to come? Uh, this is a very, very important question. We've got to be convinced about uh, the fact that our brand is credible and if we commit ourselves to huge resources, financial resources, everything you know translates into financials, if we commit ourselves to resources, we're not going to make blunders. 
meaning the brand is credible. And if the positioning is such that the management starts questioning itself or starts questioning the very rationale of uh, the question, then there is something wrong with positioning. I mean, if you as a manager, or one of the managers responsible for making the decision are not really convinced that you should commit the amount of money with which must be put into the brand uh, in future months and years, why would you stick to that positioning? Raising money is not all that easy, you know. It's company's resources. Money is coming out of the reserves. Money is coming out of banks. So it is a very, very strategic area about which managers have got to be very clear and tell themselves that they really feel comfortable while they commit resources to the positioning the brand has. Again, do not lose sight of this fact that it is not a commitment to just one concept. It basically is a commitment to the set of strategies which are at work in order to achieve the objectives, the financial objectives, the marketing ob objectives. And those strategies or the set of strategies has, has, has come out of the positioning. That is why I said, uh, why should management commit itself with the positioning? Because positioning translates into something really huge. Another um, criterion is um, sustainability. And this relates to the big question, can we sustain the position for a long time? And the questions are, is it that we can no longer sustain the position? I mean, let us start with um, a question which um, might make us uh, or which makes us feel kind of susceptible and vulnerable to the market situation. And we ask ourselves, can we really sustain this position? We've got to convince ourselves whether you can or you cannot. Again, maybe because of the competitive uh, pressures or because of the lack of resources, because of some internal problems that plague the company or that has started uh, presenting the company with some serious problems. Could be anything. Maybe a lot of people leave the company. Something has gone wrong with the company culture. And all of a sudden, uh, the company finds itself at crossroads. These are uh, the few areas which um, might make the company vulnerable. And you as brand managers, they must be sensitive to all these things because it affects the overall um, performance of the company and uh, the yours in particular. The next question that you have to ask yourself is, is it that the needs and wants will remain the same for some time to come? Now, this is not something which stems from vulnerability. This is something you know, positive and uh, this prepares you for times to come. This prepares you to preempt something which uh, might pop up as something negative. So you, you've got to convince yourself that um, the positioning is going to uh, sustain itself um, because uh, of the resources that you have committed and uh, because of the uh, sales results that you're getting from the market and uh, because of the overall reputation of the brand that it enjoys uh, on the market. Yet another question that you must ask yourself is, is it that the position might be copied quickly to the buyer competition? I think this is something that we talked earlier as well. And this, uh, again, is something uh, that should uh, keep you uh, prepared um, all the time for any uh, possible eventuality. Another question that you should ask yourself, what is it that we need to sustain this positioning internally as well as externally? 
Well, as far as the external situation is concerned, I think that we have talked about so many different factors and examples um, that, uh, that might present the company with um, a, a, a problem, um, giving the company reason to update the position, a positive or negative. But let us talk about the internal ones. Uh, this is something which I will talk again in relation to another perspective, but uh, let me go light on uh, this one right away. All the people in the company, meaning all the managers and all the people down below, have got to stay committed uh, to the positioning of the brand. Again, you might start questioning, uh, is it that we have to tell them this is the positioning statement? Uh, well, in a way, yes. But basically, it is the strategies and it is the executional framework which is a translation of those strategies and which overall is a reflection of the positioning of the brand to which the whole company must stay committed. So you've got to ask yourself, is it that we can sustain this positioning because people uh, continue to stay committed to the positioning? If the answer is yes, then you are a good company, a lucky company. And if the answer is no, you've got to with the pinpoint where the problem lies. Once you have identified the problem, you've got to go for the fix. Meaning, you as a team, a smaller team in the marketing department first, and as a larger or an extended team within the company across various functional boundaries. The next criterion uh, is uh, what uh, you may call fit. Does the positioning have a perfect fit with the organization? Part of that I already have talked about. The question that arises is, does the positioning promise fulfilling our goals? Again, the factor of commitment. And I think uh, you are quite very clear about uh, that factor by now. The next question that you should ask yourself is, does it have the potential, meaning does the positioning have the potential to fill the growth gap? Back to one of the previous lectures, uh, one of the goals of uh, the brand management or one of the objectives that you fulfill is that you fill the growth gap. And you fill the growth gap by strengthening the existing brand, by introducing its variations, by getting to different segments, or maybe by getting to different categories of different products. This is an area which is going to be talked about, uh, spanned over uh, the quite a few lectures, and this basically relates line extensions and brand extensions. I should be talking about that area in great detail. But that's something that we have to ask ourselves. Is the, the positioning strong enough? And does it have the potential to fill that growth gap with the help of existing brand or not? If the growth gap is to be filled only in the segment or only in the category, that you are um, working for or working within, um, that's one thing. But if the growth gap is to be filled um, over a broader area, meaning there is a great need for the company to get into uh, different categories, like I just pointed out, then uh, it becomes a game in which not only you, but also others uh, are involved. Well, others are involved all the time, but uh, the emphasis is going to um, shift on the categories, uh, the potential categories for the company it may like to get into as part of the overall business region. This uh, is a very a important question because uh, um, that relates what the company really wants to achieve two years down the line or three years or five years. All right, having answered uh, these uh, questions, the next one you may ask yourselves is, will the positioning really enhance value 
of the brand and hence the profitability of the company? Well, if the uh, questions that, uh, that I have asked, uh, I have talked about so far, are uh, well answered and you are very clear about um, uh, the uh, circumstances that surround your particular situation within the company, then um, I think uh, you are in just about the right position to get the right answer. Um, if uh, the answer is the right, meaning that yes, you can uh, tell yourself the brand has the potential to further grow, uh, it will fill the growth gap, it will uh, bring a lot more the contribution, meaning financial contribution uh, to the company, and hence it will beef up the bottom line. And bottom line is, is the bottom line. And uh, if you have a healthy bottom line, it automatically translates into good cash flows. And if you have positive cash flows, does it provide you with an opportunity to go for further investments? And in particular, of your interest is investments into the market. Communications, a huge area. Advertising, promotions, and this and that. We're going to talk about those also later. But uh, what I'm saying is, um, this is a very, very uh, weighty question uh, which must be answered. Uh, that does the positioning have the potential to add value to the brand and hence add to the profitability of the company? And with this, uh, we are done with the uh, criteria uh, that must be at work in order for us to make the assessment of uh, whether we should go for an update of positioning or not. With that, we are done with the first guiding principle, which is update your position whenever it is necessary. And uh, with the help of um, a, a very well laid out uh, the criteria, we are now clear uh, when, uh, how, and why we should go for an update in our positioning. The second uh, the guiding principle is that brand positioning uh, guides all the strategies within the company. Now, this is something which I've been talking about you know, here and there um, at so many different occasions. Let us um, talk about um, brand XYZ all over again. When I was talking about the changing the focus from um, the direct delivery, meaning um, delivering free, uh, the two, uh, the need for putting up small outlets, the meaning small utility restaurants, uh, I was talking about a change in strategies. I mean, that's automatic. But whether we change the positioning or not, I mean, that is something that has to be taken for granted. Uh, whenever you shift your focus from one area of activity to another, even uh, remaining within the same ambit of positioning, uh, strategies are, are going to experience uh, with some change here and there. So the example of uh, with the putting up small utility restaurants uh, takes us into the, the area of investment and into the area of uh, uh, training of people into the area of uh, logistics of different nature, into the area of uh, the warehousing or storage at those restaurants of different nature. Because now we are dealing with um, um, a network. Another implication which uh, uh, it is going to have uh, is um, in terms of uh, your decision whether you should own all those small outlets or you should get into kind of a franchiser and franchisee relationship. Uh, this is something which uh, you might have studied in, the, in one of the courses of uh, the business administration. Um, but my point is, if you're going to own all the restaurants all over the place, your strategy is going, or the set of strategies is going to be of one nature. Um, and if you're going to get into some kind of um, a franchising arrangement, then the set of strategies is going to be very different altogether. 
the objective here is not to talk about uh, the pros and cons uh, relating uh, with the owning the chain uh, versus uh, the getting getting into you know, franchising. The objective here is to uh, understand and uh, appreciate the significance which is attached to changing strategies and how to um, be ready for that and uh, how to bring about changes in the implementation uh, process and how to be uh, led uh, the by brand positioning. Now, I said even if there is no change in the brand positioning, now, I'm not saying that uh, there is just no change uh, in the positioning and we are getting into restaurants from uh, the service of one kind which was or which still is you know, direct delivery. I'm saying whatever the positioning is, even if it necessitates a change in the position, uh, it all the more reason it is going to bring about a change in the strategies because strategies are a translation of the positioning statement that really guides you uh, the kind of areas you should get into in order to start working to achieve your objectives. So uh, this is, uh, I would say, the very relevant example of um, how positioning uh, guides us into uh, developing strategies and into bringing about a change in strategies. And uh, to sum up uh, the example which I've just talked about, um, these are the strategies which in terms of uh, the management uh, you will call um, strategies of growth. You might be grappling with strategies which uh, are connected to a decline, but this is a situation in which you're trying to come to grips with strategies of growth. And th this is a situation in which you're going to make your brand more credible. This is a situation in which you're going to strengthen your brand, increase its sales, and add to the value uh, that it is going to bring to the company and um, add to the value it carries for the customer. So that's about positioning, leading uh, all the operational strategies of the company. It's clear. I hope very much. The third guiding principle uh, relates the top management. And this principle says that top management must lead the charge. What this really means is that top management has got to stay committed to the positioning. And their commitment that it must not be just lip service. They've got to manifest uh, that support in real terms. And uh, if they are committed to uh, the brand positioning, others are going to follow them. And that will become the company's culture. And if the company that has that kind of culture, there is no way that the company is not in a position to fulfill with all the goals and objectives that it has set to itself. Um, the fourth guiding principle is um, that employees of the company bring positioning to life. Now, here again, you might be thinking, uh, how come it is that employees could bring their positioning to life? Because it is advertising, it is communication, it is so many different things which are taking place um, on the marketing side, which um, should, in principle, bring positioning to life. No, it is not that. Don't forget that positioning gets translated into so many different strategies and into a complete framework, which is all encompassing. And it takes that framework, takes into its fold all the people working for the company. Isn't it that the product or the brand you're selling is manufactured somewhere? And there are some people responsible to produce a certain quality according to the benchmark, which is uh, established by your brand. Isn't it that there are some people responsible for transportation of all that? Isn't it that there are some people who are responsible for inventory management of the brand that you are selling or the brand that you have created? Uh, isn't it that uh, uh, there are people uh, that who are keeping um, all the accounts in relation to whatever is happening uh, with the brand and with the company day in, day out? So all these people across so many 
functional boundaries, they've got to be sold to the positioning. They've got to be convinced that whatever positioning uh, with the marketing department or brand managers have created is very relevant and the company has got to achieve that uh, in order to be a viable entity. And for that, you've got to carry out internal marketing. And internal marketing is something that cannot be enforced. It is something which has to be taken by all the employees by conviction. You just cannot order something and tell him or her, well, this is the way uh, that we are looking at uh, the product or the brand, and this is the way you must also start thinking about. You cannot enforce that. They have got to develop conviction in their minds and create position in their minds uh, uh, regarding the positioning of the brand which they are handling, whether in terms of uh, producing it or in terms of uh, maintaining the warehousing or in any other terms. Everybody within the company has got to be uh, sold to the idea of uh, the positioning and sold to the positioning statement, meaning all the strategies. Only then we're going to work for the implementation of those strategies. So in other words, they've got to become brand ambassadors. If you are the brand managers, all other employees of the company have got to be the brand ambassadors. Wherever they are, they've got to think all the time about uh, the brand strategies, uh, meaning brand positioning. All the time they have to, I mean, all the time they work, they have to work on those lines. And uh, that's the way they bring positioning of the brand to life. That is what is meant by that. Through internal marketing, I talked about that. Through internal marketing, you maximize your positioning um, in so many different ways. You have carried out internal marketing. It is not a one-time process. You keep doing that. And uh, you are talking with, um, with your colleagues um, informally and formally uh, at so many different forums during training programs, during presentations, um, across the department presentations, and so on and so forth. Uh, but there is, there are certain factors with which um, really maximize the positioning. And those are the factors which come into play while you talk with them, while you try to build up their conviction through formal and informal forums. And those factors, um, as uh, the, uh, the author of the textbook, uh, which is the prescribed textbook for this course, calls audience. It is an acronym, A-U-D-I-E-N-C-E, -E, audience. Now, what this audience is, which really maximizes the uh, positioning of the brand um, as a result of uh, internal marketing that you have carried out or that you carry out from time to time. Uh, let's take a look at that. The first letter of the acronym Audience A, it stands for awareness. Now, this is not the awareness that we are or that we keep talking about uh, in relation to the marketplace, meaning customers. It is awareness on part of the employees. They should be able to uh, clearly state the brand positioning. That's what the author uh, states. And that's what, what the author suggests very strongly, that all the employees within the company should be in a position to clearly state positioning of the brand. Now, it may not be in exactly the same terms or in words which you have uh, put together as part of your strategic plan. But what it means is, uh, whenever they talk about positioning, uh, they, should, they should not be off the track. They should not be miles and miles off. They should be on the same wavelength. The second letter of uh, the acronym audience is U, and U stand for understanding. They must understand, meaning the employees, 
why the brand positioning was chosen and how that affects their lives as part of the company. So in other words, um, they've got to be told that why that particular position was chosen. It is not that you have got to go through all the marketing process, uh, like you're going through this course of brand management. It doesn't mean that. What it really means is that you've got to give them the rationale. And you, you know, giving the rationale, you talk about the overall market, meaning the category you are operating in. You talk, you know, generally about your competitors, and you talk about uh, the gap which you are trying to fill, and uh, you talk about, you know, strengths and weaknesses of your brand, the vis-a-vis, and the competition, and then convince them that the positioning that you have uh, chosen for the brand is just about the right positioning, so that they are sold to it and they can develop understanding of that. So awareness and understanding. What does D stand for? for? D stands for direction. The internal marketing that you are carrying out uh, gives all the employees of the company a sense of direction. But once you know they have the awareness, the requisite awareness, and understand uh, the background, um, or what you may call the reason for being of the product, meaning why the product exists. Once they are convinced about the reason for being, mark this uh, the terminology, they really have a very clear sense of direction. And the need to have you know, that sense of direction in order to be uh, the best workers in whatever field they are working in. This is the sense of direction which is going to help the company reduce the level of quality which is expected by your customers and this is the sense of direction which is going to help your colleagues to handle the product through uh, all the stages within the company and outside of the company. So their output in terms of uh, the direction they must take uh, has got to be the best. Uh, about this, you can develop standards because the ones you know they have this sense of direction and you want them to stay the course and not to move right and left which is obvious I think which goes without saying you've got to develop certain standards and when I say you what I mean is people all over the company they've got to develop standard operating procedures, SOPs, which basically is part of operations management. But the concept is, uh, and the concept should be very clear to you guys as well, that uh, there have to be a set of standards relating different areas within the company. Um, and those standards have got to be followed with by people working in those areas so that they do not really deviate uh, from what is standardized. Only then you will get the product of the same standard and of the same quality day in, day out. And by the way, this is one thing which sets a product, uh, uh, a tangible product apart from a service product. Um, in a, uh, when you are selling a service product, it becomes quite very difficult to maintain the same standard because uh, you're not selling something tangible. Anyway, that's not the point of discussion at the moment. I just digressed for the sake of uh, your benefit. The uh, next uh, letter of uh, the audience is uh, I, and uh, I stands for inspiration. What is inspiration and how it really helps in maximizing uh, positioning of the brand? And uh, what are the remaining letters and what they stand for uh, is something uh, I think for the next lecture, um, I would like to uh, wrap up whatever we have talked about the positioning so far and whatever is left of the concept is going to be uh, taken up uh, in the next lecture in which we should be done with this uh, concept, inshallah, and uh, get on to the next uh, learning block 
uh, within the uh, brand, the management framework. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz. Until then.